Hi guys, it's Chris here from Some Bloke Who Travels A Lot and today we are in Sydney but we are on our way to visit Uluru. What a trip that was. Videos from my amazing experience there on the channel, links at the end of the video and in the description below. Now in this video I refer to both Uluru and Ayers Rock. Of course it is Uluru and I have my utmost respect for that but the flight route and resort at the time of the flight said Ayers Rock. Hence, I refer to both names. So, how to get there? Well, easiest and simplest way is a direct flight from Sydney to Ayers Rock with Jetstar, which is exactly what I booked. However, a month after I booked, I mentioned I was flying with Jetstar and received, oh, I'm sure you'll be fine, from an Australian friend. So, it was with a little trepidation I headed to the airport for my journey to Uluru. The flight departed from T2 domestic at Sydney Airport, which is a bit basic airside, but it's domestic, so fine. I was a bit early and found Jetstar were a stickler for checking opens two hours before the flight, so I enjoyed a coffee in the sun whilst I waited. The other thing I found that Jetstar were a stickler for, wait, not mine personally, or we'd have had loads of problems, but hold and cabbage luggage weight. Now this was no surprise as I'd received numerous emails from Jetstar asking me if I wanted to buy extra allowances. I was glad I had as they don't mess about. I manually weighed my cabin bag before check-in and there were random checks at the gate. Now I've absolutely no problems with a low-cost carrier being a stickler about luggage allowance, especially as in the case of Jetstar, they make this very clear. Once airside, the airport had jumped into the modern world and as terminals go, it ticked all the boxes. Those boxes being shops and restaurants. And as I was well fed and no need for Victoria's Secrets attire, I headed straight to the gate to see my silver bird arrive. Boarding, as straightforward as any airline I've flown, and the luggage policy seems to work as there's no fighting for overhead locker space. I was in the first group to board due to the bundle I purchased, got to my seat, and luggage stored with ease to settle in for a fun flight to Uluru. And I knew it was going to be a fun flight, Jetstar told me so. I also knew it was going to be a comfortable flight as I'd booked an emergency exit seat with extra leg room and that all important window seat. Stunning views coming up. Not to mention, the middle seat was empty, just like Club Europe with BA.
Part of my bundle package was a food item and a drink from the menu, which was fairly extensive, but no different to many low-cost carriers. Prices were neither expensive, but also not cheap, but I didn't feel Dick Turpin had done the pricing. Wanting to look like a tourist, I went native with a dad's pie and a solo lemonade. I'm not sure if a dad's pie is improved by the amount of tomato ketchup I added, but I had a feeling it was better that the pie wore the ketchup rather than me. Flight duration was 2 hours 40 minutes, but about 2 hours 15 till we touched the ground at Uluru. I was asked not to film during the landing and of course duly complied, but the view from the window as we taxied to the terminal really did give a flavour of things to come. so much for watching and if you've enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up those likes are really appreciated and if you want to see more of my experiences at Uluru you'll find links in the description below and coming up at the end now you might also wish to check out my channel for flight reports hotel reviews and my travels all over the world and consider subscribing it is free of course and if you click the bell YouTube will notify you when I publish a new video once again, thank you very much for watching and happy travels.